Don't laugh, we've all done it. Designed a brand new character, spent hours meticulously designing their outfit and their backstory, and then forgetting about them. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna be resurrecting three characters of mine that have since been buried deep down into the back of my brain, only to be remembered quite recently. Now, I enjoy designing characters' outfits and designs quite often, so there are plenty of characters that I have created and then since thrown away, but these three characters, Frog Girl, Nima, and Philomena, are all characters that meant something to me at some point, and I just want to breathe a little new life in them and see where I can take them. Starting with Frog Girl. You know, I haven't drawn her since 2018. Here's the last time our paths crossed. So I did want to just take a step back and try and figure out what it is that she actually looks like and see if I have any like new experiences and thoughts that I could like infuse into her and just freshen it up a bit. This is kind of like my silhouette. So I'm just exploring the most basic elements of her design, like her little bathing suit and maybe her body proportions and her frog headpiece thing. <laughs> now she has webbed feet and hands so I just kind of sketched that out a little bit to kind of remember what that might look like and because the hand was in a different pose I was like where would that webbing be between the thumb and the forefinger and I ended up with this like a little triangle and I thought that looked really cool and of course she's standing on a lily pad because she's a frog Drawing this, I don't know if it was something that I used to know, but it occurred to me that her name's Lily. I always just called her Frog Girl, but I mean, her name's Lily. <laughs> so now this next sketch was me exploring more like the details of the outfit. So her design is like a little bathing suit with straps, but they like turn into stripes and then they get to the, to the bottom of the bathing suit and then there's like a little bit of like a frill. Then she has very short red hair. Well, it's more like an auburn. And then her like main focal point of her design is like this giant hat that looks Looks like a frog face and when I very first designed her I had never played Animal Crossing but now every time I look at it I just think Animal Crossing feel like I needed to throw that out there <laughs> but yes she has a frog headpiece bathing suit webbed feet and hands and a short red bob that's her design and that's really it I kind of just took that and freshened it up but also not completely ignoring any elements that I had in it originally but like trying to take it and just make it better I wasn't quite done designing the outfit yet but I did move on and start sketching some thumbnails for like what kind of pose I'd like to do for the finished illustration. Now I, I was trying to be inspired by like a frog so having her sit on a lily pad kind of like the picture I drew a couple years ago. I wanted to say two years but 2018 was not two years ago. <laughs> I did explore a couple different sitting poses but I don't know it's a little girl in like a bathing suit and it's just difficult you know that's all I'll say. Like this one I was like maybe I can distract from that by having her sit in the flower like it's a bean bag but no, I didn't like that one either. <laughs> this one I had her like sitting cross-legged, which is a pose I do draw quite often and it's really fun for me. But again, it was like bathing suit, kid, eh. So what I actually did halfway through drawing it was decide that, oh, I'll have her looking away from the camera. But I don't know, something wasn't right. I even had her like holding a flower so that she could be sitting on the lily pad and then she's holding the lily, but it wasn't really speaking to me either. So I decided this time just to stand her up because I really liked the drawing in the bottom left where her hands are spread it out and she kind of just looked looks like a kid showing off like her favorite bathing suit or something. So I stood her up and I actually gave her the lily again to hold, but this pose just kind of bored me. <laughs> so I didn't put too much time into that. I did try two other little tiny things just to see, but mm, whatever. But I did need these to start practicing the colors because I do not know when the last time I actually colored her in traditionally was. So I was gonna have to swatch some markers and figure out what colors I was gonna use. Here you can see that, bloopy doopy doopy doo. And then I swatched them out on one one of the smaller sketches that I didn't care too much about. Then once I felt fully prepared, I moved on to a brand new sheet of paper and I began sketching out Little Lily, Frog Girl. It feels more natural to call her Frog Girl. So maybe I will continue with that. Anyway, I'm just noticing since I am from the future, <laughs> compared to this person drawing, who is that? They, me, I have not finished designing her outfit yet, but I have obviously started jumping into drawing the finished drawing, so that's cool. I did try my best to just replicate that pose from the bottom left of the sketchbook because I just liked it so much. You might notice that they have quite a few similarities. I just wanted that like proud kid pose. <laughs> One thing I definitely messed up with when sketching this was just her proportions. When I did sketch that bottom left sketch, I was purposely like trying to make her look younger by like shortening 
defining features. And I think I did a much better job in that one than on this one. Her legs are just very long, which was purposeful. I went with the long legs because I'm like, frogs have long legs. Again, it's not one of those things that like ruins the drawing or something. It just makes her look more like a preteen or something where she's supposed to be a little younger than that. It's just not what I would have went for if I had noticed it was happening. Then for her hair, I did change that up a bit. I tried to make it look like she had just gotten out of the water. So her hair was like a little wet and it was just beginning to air dry. That was the attempt. Every other time I've ever drawn her, I gave her like, you know, full cartoon volume. And I thought, let's try something different. Now, as it is now, it kind of looks very similar to all the sketches that I had previously done. But it occurred to me after drawing a couple like fluffy lily flower things that the fluff on like the edges of her bathing suit reminded me of a lily. So I did actually even push that further and I took a little fluff that was like poking out of the top of the bathing suit. I decided to actually round it off and make it look a lot more like the flower instead of just an element of the bathing suit. And then I changed the stuff poking out of the bottom of the bathing suit to just look more built up kind of the way the flower looks as well. But I found a longer way to say that. <laughs> All right, sketch is done. I took my kneaded eraser, I rolled it in my hands and then I began just rolling it up and down on the sketch. This erases most of it without erasing all of it. So now I can start adding color without having to worry about like it picking up too much of it or it being too distracting underneath. I started with this light green color and colored in all of the lightest green areas. I also tried to add like a scaly texture to the bathing suit to kind of mimic a frog. Then I grabbed the dark green that I had swatched out and colored in all of the dark sections. This took a couple layers because it was a little streaky, but I was also able to like kind of distract from that by adding in more of that like texture of scales. Then I used the dark green and the light green to kind of blend upwards from her feet because she has like the green webbed frog feet and then they blend into like her skin tone as it moves up and then the same with the hands. And then once I reached the skin tone, I blended that in and colored in the rest of her body. Now, if I had just blended her skin tone into the darkest green, it would have looked a little muddy. So I ended up using the dark green, blending into the light green, then blending into a very light version of her skin tone and then blending into her natural skin tone. And it just created like a softer gradient. And I think it just looks much better than if I had not done that. After coloring in her face, I moved on to the hair. And again, I'm trying to find the right mixture of volume and soaking wet. And I think I did a pretty good job. Then once I had a pretty good layer of all of the colors, I thought it was safe to move on to the line art. And I started with the eyes because I feel like the eyes are just really, really important. And if you mess up the eyes, the rest of the drawing just kind of just never quite feels the same. Personally, feel like I did mess up the eyes. So the drawing does not feel the same, but I will not say that it's terrible. <laughs> and then I gave her a mouth that kind of mimics a frog too. I tried to make it really long and wide and give her cheeks like that rounded frog shape. And then I just did the line art on the rest of it. Now there's lots of different ways to do this. You can do color then line art like I'm doing right now. You can do line art and then color. But if you do end up going sketch color line art, you may notice that when you start adding in the line art that you just missed little tiny areas. So I'm, I did go in and just kind of fill in those tiny little cracks. <laughs> Not the funnest part, but it makes a difference. Then I took this tiny little white Posca that I didn't realize I had and I found over the weekend. <laughs> so I've just been trying to find reasons to use it. And I added in a bunch of scale texture. I also whitened out the like frilly parts of the bathing suit. And then once that's dry, I'm gonna go over it with a Copic marker just to like make it more green, but it'll still be much more vibrant than if I just went over like a dark area of green with a lighter color of green. Like that's not how markers work. But by adding a little bit of this acrylic paint, I'm now able to go on top of it. And have a lighter area. While I was waiting for the Posca to dry, I did add in a little lily pad and then I went in with my light green and colored over the Posca. I did add the very most simplest little background <laughs> under her feet of the water. This is when I realized I made her too tall and I was a little upset about it. <laughs> So that is actually why I decided to jump into the computer and just try again. Because I've noticed when I draw traditionally, which is something that I've been doing a lot of lately, things just don't turn out the way I see them in my head before I draw them. So I decided to jump into digital, which is kind of like, it's what I've done the most, even though I have not been doing it as much lately. And I've noticed when I draw digitally, I can usually get it the way I'm picturing it in my head. So here it is me attempting frog girl again. You can see the proportions are very different because this is, I don't know why, I just have more control. Control. I struggled a lot with the pose with this one too. 
for the same reasons. I did try to push myself to go with more like a frog pose, but in the end, I decided to just draw her standing. Another major difference was that I brought her hand up and gave her the peace sign so you can kind of see the webbing a little bit more. I feel like with the traditional one, I didn't really emphasize her most interesting feature, but I'm much, much happier with the proportions in this one. I think she looks her age, <laughs> which is always a good sign as an artist if you can do that. Here I am beginning the la- Oh, <coughs> whoa, excuse me. Here I am beginning the line art. I actually decided to look at a reference of a frog and uh, made her hat piece look a little bit more like a real frog. Like it's still very cartoony and relates back to her original design, but I think it has just a little bit more pizzazz. <laughs> Once the line art was done, I began adding color and I didn't really take too much time on this. It was kind of just to see what the difference would look when I tried to draw the same thing digitally versus traditionally. And the difference is just so extreme. I don't even like, I don't even know what to say. Like I purposely changed the hat a little bit, but the rest I'm literally just kind of, well, and the, the pose, like the fingers, but like <laughs> the rest, I'm literally just trying to do the exact same thing, but it looks completely different when I do it digitally. If anyone has any idea why that might be, please inform me because I am very much unsure how I as a person can draw the same thing twice and have it look so differently. <laughs> anyway, that wraps it up for Frog Girl, little Lily. <laughs> Here's her many forms. I like even have a hard time saying it's the same person in both of them because they do look so different. But yes, Frog Girl. It was, it was fun drawing her again because I think I made her up when I was like 14. So it was a nice little jump back into the past. Anyway, moving on to the next one. We're going to go back to traditional and we're going to draw. I've always referred to her as like the Blubfish Fairy. I have no idea why she's not aquatic at all. She just has kind of features similar to a blobfish in my opinion, but her name starts with an N and for the longest time I kind of like asked people what I should name her, but I, I'm, we're going with Nima. I feel like it fits her, it suits her, but she's very ethereal. You can kind of see when I'm sketching her that I, I like to use soft swooping shapes for her. Her design's basically very flowy dress, a little corset, and she has all these little like pieces that like jet off of her that are like soft and squishy looking and sometimes Sometimes I draw them like they're leaves, sometimes I draw them like wings, sometimes I draw them like they're just random features of the outfit. <laughs> it really varies. So clearly I don't quite know what she is, but it's a really fun design to draw and the fact that it changes every time just makes it more fun. One of her main like design elements aside from her outfit, but like her features is she has very long rounded ears. And then I forgot it in that first sketch, but she's supposed to have a very circular head with a even longer neck. So she has very long limbs, which is the exact opposite of what I wanted to do with Frog Girl. I wanted her to look younger. This character is just supposed to be like a very majestic fairy, like ethereal. Maybe her bones aren't as stiff as like a human's, so she can like, when she bends her legs or walks, like it'll just look so much softer and smoother. I don't know. It's just kind of how I picture her. She's not human, okay? After I did the second sketch, I jumped right in and started doing colors, and I'm so glad I did because it was very difficult trying to find her colors, which is kind of funny because she was designed out of like a mystery box that came with three markers and so I designed her with those markers. Um, I don't have those markers. Don't ask me where they are. <laughs> so I had to try and find like alternatives with my Ohu and my Copic and it did not come easy. So you'll see a couple different attempts at finding the right colors. The second one was much closer. Oh, I should show you the picture from 2018. It's funny, this one I also have not drawn since 2018. Must have been the year of abandoning characters. <laughs> and then here's when I finally found the colors I was looking looking for. She's much more saturated and bright in the pink area and then her purples are like less saturated and that's what I was going for. And so you kind of see just how much more vibrant she looks in that bottom sketch versus the top two. I did draw her one more time because I wanted to try and see what it would look like if I made those elements of her dress that kind of just stick out near her shoulders. If I made it like some kind of collar that went behind her head and I wanted to do it using the same colors that were already chosen and I wanted to see if it worked and it didn't really but that's what it would look like like if I were to do it, which I did, but small. And at this point I still hadn't quite gotten her head and like neck proportions right. So I drew it again, this time focusing on those parts of her design and I got much, much closer to what I was looking for. So then once I had done that, I was much happier and I think I was ready to move on to a brand new piece of paper. It's just so like ever out of frame. I apologize, but there's me drawing Nima, fairy of the blobfish. My absolute favorite part of her design is just the, all the flowy 
fabric. So I tried to really just have fun with that. I had a lot more trouble with the skirt than I feel like I usually do. Like the bottom just ended up looking too long, but I eventually got it to someplace I was much happier with. It just came down to shortening the bottom hem, well, the back hem, because I think I was drawing it like I was looking up at her, but the rest of her body's like looking straight at us. So I just had to push it up and then it looked a lot better. Once the sketch was complete, I did the same thing with my kneaded eraser, rolled it out on there, softened up the pencil, and then I began adding the color, laying out all the pink. I tried my best not to like lose the sketch and the folds of the fabric because I hadn't done the line art yet. And I kind of liked where most of them were. So I like followed the flow of the fabric with the marker to kind of create streaks with the marker to remember where those went. Then I went in with the purple and colored in her hair as well as corset and her boots all in that color. Then I took my much lighter pastel purple. It's actually from the Ohu pastel set and I colored in all of her skin. I do not have enough characters that just have fantastic skin colors like this. And by fantastic, I mean like fantasy. <laughs> so it was really, really fun to use something purple. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. I also used a pastel like pinkish purple to add blush. And then it was time to do the line art. Again, starting with the eyes because you know how I feel about the eyes and then proceeding to do the rest of the body and then filling in little spots with marker that I missed. And then just like Frog Girl, I took the Posca pen and just added in some designs this time for her just to add something more intriguing. So I've got the little spirals on her corset. I added some details to the shoes and then I added a little something to like the hem and then a little something to the hair. And then once that dried, I did go over all that with marker as well, depending on where it was. So like where it was like her shoes and her corset, I used purple. Where there was pink, I added pink. And this is how that turned out. Again, I thought at this point, I drew the last one with digital and traditional. Why not do it again? See what the difference is. I feel like you could just see how much more comfortable I am working digitally. Like just how flowy it looks, how the proportions are more what I'm looking for. Like that's not something you could judge, but I can. It's like how I see it in my head. Like the pose is much more planned out because I'm able to move like the hand instead of having to redraw it. It's just a lot cleaner and easier workflow for me. And again, I don't know if it's because I've done it more or if it's just because it's easier or if it's just because it's easier for me. I guess there's three options. You know, that's another thing that makes digital art a little bit easier for me is the ability to flip the canvas and like check the balance of the art. <laughs> Can't do that traditionally. I also have a very difficult time when I'm drawing traditionally just seeing what I'm drawing because it's not like looking at me right. You know, I'm like sitting at a desk and I see it at a very distorted angle. Whereas with digital, I can like see it more straight on. So I'm able to better create what I see in my head with what I see with my eyes. Once the line art was done, I added color behind it. And I also changed the line art to a purple color because I just felt like that suited her a lot more. And I did play around with the colors a lot. I think you can tell, like I just couldn't settle. I kept looking back at the drawing I made in 2018, but then I was like, mm, I kind of want to change it a little because that one was much quicker. That was probably like a 20, 30 minute sketch thing. So I did want to find like a color for the course at this time instead of just using the line art, which is just a preference. I do really like the way that one looks, but I just wanted to do it differently this time. The only thing that really stayed the same was the skin tone. I also changed those little things on the edge of her dress to look more like wings because looking back at the traditional one, they look like wings, even though that was not their intention. Then I added some gradients here and there just to stop it from looking too flat. And of course, some little details here and there on the hem of the skirt and some sparkling glitter. And uh, here's the digital version. I do want to show them both side by side and just kind of like, I don't know, just <laughs> stare at them in awe with me and like try and figure out why the freak they look so different, even though I'm trying to draw the exact same thing. I, ha I have no words. So I guess we'll just move on to the final character, which I think I had the actual most fun with. So I'm excited about it. Let's do that. This final character is Philomena. She actually had a full fleshed out story. She's supposed to be from the future. I think she's like, I don't know, somewhere in her teens. She's another youngin character. So I did want to maintain proportions to emphasize that. What's cool about her, po <laughs> her outfit is that she wears like a polka dot bodysuit with like loose white layers on top, which even as I age up, I still find fun to draw. So it's kind of a shame that I haven't drawn her in so long. Now, while her outfit is really, really cool, I guess that's a matter of opinion. <laughs> What's really unique about her, at least I thought was unique at the time when I made her up about 20 years ago. Okay, not that long. Okay, at least 16 years ago though. Oof. 
She has four ponytail buns of turquoise hair. Can you tell I made her up a long time ago? <laughs> she originally had five and it looked like a flower behind her, but I like toned it down to four because I thought that might be more practical. So this is what her hair would look like from the back. You wanna know something funny about how old this character is? So she's from the future, right? And so I wrote this in the past and she had a device, a flat device that came with a pen that she could draw on this flat device, but it was a computer. Mm? You might know that as like a tablet. We didn't have those back then. I'm sure they were in development, but at the time, little young in self knew nothing of them and uh, came up with it and thought it was the way of the future. I'm really glad to be living in my own future. <laughs> It's just a shame we don't dress with polka dots and stripes and we're full leotard things. I wonder how I'll be right about that. <laughs> I probably should deep down hope that I'm not. Anyway, I still really like drawing her outfit even though I would never want to wear it. So here's just a full body drawing that. So the top left tiny sketch is basically her outfit as I designed it. And then this larger one is me kind of trying to update it a little bit. So she had a very low waisted skirt, which I'm not into now. And so I made it a high waisted skirt. I also didn't feel like drawing calf height boots so I didn't instead to like kind of like reference that I cropped the leotard at that height then added like a sock and then added like a big sneaker it is a little hard to see because there's some Copic marker coming through that page but the top left we have Philomena's original design and then we have my new updated version which I'm really excited to draw so excited in fact that I couldn't even wait to pull out a new piece of paper <laughs> and I thought she would look so cute in like a chibi style where her hands and feet were just massive and like a big head as well. So I tried that out. I'm really happy with this. It looks so cute. Can you imagine it running around in a little cartoon? Oh, anyway, I composed myself enough to get myself a new piece of paper and I began drawing her for the final time, at least traditionally. Now of the three characters that I drew today, Philomena is the only one that's like a main character. She had a story, she had a plot. So I really wanted to show that in her pose. So I widened her stance, gave her hands on hips, you know, gave her that like, I'm on the cover of a movie pose poster pose and I'm really really happy with it. I think this turned out to be the best traditional drawing that I did all day. Maybe because it was the last one and I was the most warmed up or maybe I just did better. <laughs> <laughs> you never really know. I love this sketch. I love the way one hand is like up on the hip and the other one's kind of like slipping down the leg. I like how I move the buns on her head like higher up. I'm just very, very happy with this. Anyways, once the sketch was done, I erased most of it. And then I realized I forgot to swatch colors. So I made a little tiny thumbnail to butcher with <laughs> my color choices and swatched those out. And here you can see the colors that I ended up picking. And all that was left to do was just, <clears throat> excuse me. And all that was left to do was to begin coloring it. So I used this like carrot orange kind of color. That's not what it's called, but I colored in all the orange areas. At first I gave her orange lipstick, but that does change. I decided the blue would be more fun. <laughs> this was a little tricky to do traditionally, but her design, at least the last time I drew her, she has like dark orange leggings with light orange polka dots. So I colored it in with the lightest orange first and then drew in the polka dots with the darker orange and then colored around those dots. It was weirdly stressful and satisfying at the same time. Then once the orange was done, I moved on to coloring in her skin. I started with the fingers. It's really fun to just draw a finger with a big brush nib. I don't know what it is. You just kind of like bloop create a little french fry and then you got fingers. Now because I'm using a darker color for the skin I was a little nervous about just going over the sketch without any other guidelines because I knew that this color is darker than what I sketched with so I'm going to lose any of that sketch I won't be able to see it at all. So I actually went in and did the line art for the face while I could still see the sketch and then I just colored it in. Then I finished coloring in like the sneakers and everything else. And since most of this design's white, I didn't really have to do that. And then I moved on to the line art and just finished up and cleaned up all the edges, colored in little areas that I missed. There it is. <laughs> the line art really makes a big difference with like areas of hair or like areas that have no color, like her outfit. <laughs> and, like everything just looks so much cleaner once you have the line art. I did try to add a little bit of shading to the white just to give it some dimension and look a little less flat, but it's not super visible. <laughs> so I, that's why I'm mentioning it because you probably can't see that it happened. So this just ended up being my favorite sketch of all of them. I'm really happy with it. But even though I'm happy with it, since I drew the last two both traditionally and digitally, I figured, hey, why not? And you know what? I am glad that I did as well because I'm happy with the way that turned out too. I actually ended up looking back at the traditional one right about here when I was drawing it and I was like, wait a minute, I really like that traditional pose way better. So I ended up lightening the opacity on this and sketching over top. I changed up the head 
head. I kind of changed where the hips were and I added more of a line of action with a little bit more flow. And it just brings a lot more life into the character. Can you see a difference? <laughs> well, I can and I'm very happy with the changes. So I went in with the line art and I don't know, line art just went really, really well with this one. <laughs> this one took half the time of the other two. I don't know, it just shows you when you're in the zone and you're enjoying how things are going, it goes quicker, it goes better. Art's a crazy thing. It's so wishy-washy and I still don't understand it, but quite happy with this drawing. That's all I know. Here's when I realized that like her little like slits in her shirt that make it like the cutouts look like water wings. So I just had to like sit there and laugh a little bit. Yep. They do look like water wings. Oh well, not changing it now. This is probably the weakest part of the digital sketch and it's this hand, but because it was digital, I was able to attempt it a lot more times without ruining the paper. So I did end up with something a lot better than the first one. Yeek, bye. Yeah, get out of here. Nobody wants you. <laughs> it was tricky. It's still not like where I would like it, but it's a lot better. And then I add a little color behind the liner. And this is when I just realized this is her body proportions. Like this is what I imagined. And I'm just so happy with it. And then all I had to do was add in the rest of the colors. I did play around with them a lot and just trying to find the right colors. I did this with all three of the digital pieces, but this one I tried a little harder because I feel like the contrast wasn't quite there with the traditional one. So I was really trying to find like an orange that looked really nice with the rest of it. And I think I ended up with this really bright version of it. And I didn't have a Copic marker that looked like that. So it's not like I could have done it traditionally, but ooh, I like it so much better. Added some fun little orange details to the shoes. Added some fun blush to the face and some makeup around her eyes. Makes it look a little more future you know? And then I added some shading to the leotard. This is a lot easier digitally because you don't like lose all the polka dots I made because you can use like a separate layer and set it to multiply or whatever look you're going for. And then uh, you don't have to say goodbye to all the little polka dots. Anyway, here's the finished Philomena digital version 2021. I really, really like it. I like both of the Philomenas. I think they really show her personality. Now, because I like both of these, I'm kind of able to see their pros and their cons like a little bit more respectfully, I feel like. So the traditional one, I do really like the pose and the shoes and everything. And then this one, I really like the proportions a little bit better. I feel like it shows her age. And then I like the way the colors turned out better on the digital one. Anyway, that does bring us to the end of the video. I hope you found some entertainment value watching me redraw some characters that I have since abandoned. Obviously, there are only so many hours in the day, so so they're probably not going to be getting too much love in the coming months. But I'm really glad that I took a little time, just dove into my past and kind of explored some of the things I have created and add a little fresh spin on them. Anyway, let me know what's a character that you abandoned that has an outfit that you really, really love and uh, maybe redraw it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.